So now let's talk more about the normal distribution. And here we have my best attempt at drawing a normal density curve. So uh, if you recall, I mean, obviously, uh, the normal distribution has, oops, sorry, let me get my correct pen here. Uh, choose that, okay. Normal uh, has two parameters, mu and sigma for the mean and uh, uh, standard deviation. And these two parameters completely define the distribution. This is a parametric distribution. So all you need are those two parameters and you know everything you need to know about the distribution and using that di distribution to drive uh, probabilities. Uh, the, it, the distribution is symmetric around the mean so let's see if I can get my, yeah, let's see this. So this should be the midpoint and the midpoint also is the mean. Uh, so, uh, you know, if I drew this accurately, this left side of the curve should be a mirror image of the right side of the curve. So they're, they're symmetric. The two tails are asymptotic to the X axis. So they approach, they approach zero, they never really get there, but they approach zero, and they approach zero um, uh, faster or slower, uh, or you know, uh, at a greater or lesser distance from the mean, depending on the standard deviation. So if you uh, chose different standard deviations, you'd get a different shape. In fact, you know what, uh, in preparation for this, I, um, I used Excel, let me see if I have it. Uh, well, let me pause a second. So, so here's the uh, spreadsheet I was using in Excel just to remind myself of some of the uh, ways you can use Excel to um, work with distributions. And uh, you can't see to the, to the left side of the screen here, I just plotted the, the probability density function and the cumulative density function. These are easy functions, Excel calculates them for you. And then I just plug in different values of mu and sigma. Uh, mu, mu zero and sigma one, that's the standard normal. So remember when you set mu to zero and sigma to one, uh, some of the terms fall out of the functions and you get the standard normal. Um, you know, you change the mean and the, uh, the, 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 the graph shifts. Uh, this, this red line here should shift too. I didn't, I'm not that sophisticated in Excel. Um, but if you change that back to zero and change the standard deviation, then you get the different shapes of the curve, and that's really what I wanted to point out. So uh, as you increase the shape, these asymptotes get further and further a long way uh, from the axis, and as you uh, decrease the uh, standard deviation, you get these different shapes. And those, you know, those those are the two parameters. So when you're using this function, this, this probability distribution function to approximate demand or whatever you're working with, uh, those two parameters will determine how well this di distribution fits the data. The distribution is an assumption that it's not going to fit the data exactly. You need to choose those parameters to um, come up with the best fit to the data that you have. And those parameters are very important because those are the those parameters are going to determine the probabilities that we derive from these distributions and then use in our optimization models. Okay, so let's go back to our graph here. Uh, so we pointed that the the other thing I wanted to point out though there is one problem that we have to deal with uh, in revenue management when we're using this function. Um, let's say this is zero. So let's say this is the, the y-axis and this is zero, somewhere below the mean. The normal distribution has a positive probability of events occurring below zero. So if we were using this to model demand, the normal distribution will result in positive probability of negative demand. And that's an issue. So you have to deal with that. Normally what um, we'll do is we'll truncate the distribution and what you end up having is a spike right here at the axis. So this kind of goes away and you have a mixed distribution. So you have a mixed discrete and continuous distribution because you can't have 
a positive probability of negative demand. Um, that that uh, leads to the other quality of distribu distribution. This is a continuous distribution and demand is a discrete event, continuous. Uh, that's okay. Um, continuous distributions are often used to uh, model discrete events, uh, but there's a couple of things we're, we're gonna have to do to just account for that when we're um, calculating our probabilities. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the, you know, what we have here. This is the pot, the density function, the PDF. And I wrote this formula at, out ahead of time because sometimes writing these formulas slows me down. I don't really want to get too much into the formula to tell you the truth. I wrote it here just for, for uh, reference. You can go through it if you want. Um, hopefully you've seen this before and this isn't your first introduction to uh, the normal uh, PDF. What I want to spend more of the time on is sort of the concepts behind this. And that is, you know, what is the probability density function? And how do we use it to derive probabilities? Well, the, the probability density function is the, the, um, the model of demand. So using the density function, you can get the probability that demand, or excuse me, that events will occur. So if this was a discrete distribution, let's say we had, um, oh, I don't know, let's say there's just some, some number above mu, and we wanted to know that the number five would be drawn from this distribution. Well, the probability of that would be just the height of the curve. The height of the curve does, does represent the probability. But because this is a continuous distribution, and this is where we get in, in to this situation here, a continuous distribution, the probability at any one individual point is zero. So to get a probability of an event, you have to take some interval. So if you wanted to know what the probability of five occurring is, you'd have to take some probability less than five and some probability uh, greater than five, and then calculate this area. And that area would represent the probability of that event occurring. Now this total area, this total area under the curve sums to one because all of the events, the prob, you know, the summa summation, su excuse me, the summation of the probability of all the events occurring is one. There's a hundred, a hundred percent chance that any event that occurs will fall within the distribution. Um, so when we talk about what what is the probability of an individual event or a a group of events occurring within a range, all we're doing is we're taking this area under the curve. The area under the curve is the probability. And the way we'll get that area is using calculus. So we're going to, you know, if this was a, if this was a rectangle, uh, we simply calculate that area by, by taking the, you know, the length times the width, and that would be the area. But because we have a curve here, we're going to have to use some uh, calculus to uh, help us out with that. So let's take a look at how we would use uh, calculus to find this area, to find this probability. Well, we have the density function. So, so this function describes this curve. This is the function that I plugged into Excel and then plotted this curve. So if we know the, 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 the formula, the function that describes this curve, then we know how to use calculus to find the area under the curve, and that's by taking the integral. So we would take the integral in this case from, let's actually call this uh, A and this point B. Let's say we wanted to find the area under the curve between points A and point B. Well, we have this uh, function here that describes the density function. So the probability or the integral would be, let's call it f of x, and it would be the integral from a to b of f of x of that function. We don't have to write the whole thing. We can just write f of x uh, dx. So we're integrating this, this from point a to point b 
this area under the curve and that will, will give us the total area and that will give us the probability. So when we get that number, that, prob that probability number will be the probability of uh, the events A through B occurring uh, uh, as they're drawn from this distribution. And that leads us to our next function, which is the, the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. And the CDF is, the, is this probability, is the integral from negative infinity to uh, some, oh, excuse me, there should be an equal sign here too, equals uh, from, from negative infinity to some point on the curve of your density function. This is the, this is the CDF, and we're going to draw this in the next video and hopefully make it a little bit clearer. But if you were looking at the CDF, um, you would take, let's see, so this is, this is point A, so from negative infinity, I hope that looks like a negative infinity sign, from, from all the way out to negative infinity, all the way up to point A, and you would get the probability of uh, all events less than A occurring. So that's what you'd get from the CDF. It would be uh, all events less than A. So we would also we could also write this as uh, the probability that uh, X, so some some event drawn from the distribution, is lesser or uh, lesser equal to uh, A in this case. Um, so different ways to write the CDF um, using just the probability statement or the um, uh, the actual integral. And I hope this is starting to look familiar. We used uh, a statement similar to this when we wrote our uh, Littlewoods rule. We said probability of X, which was the realization of demand, which was less than some uh, uh, protection le uh, level. Actually, sorry, we used greater than. We used, we're gonna turn the, the CDF around and use it. But in Littlewoods rule, this is the statement that we use from probability and you can start to see where it comes from. It comes from the CDF. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video.